making history come alive is not easy. One way to do it is by hearing the voices of those who lived it, or seeing the images of what it was like way back when. Telling the small stories that have never been told paints a bigger picture of the past. It allows history to breathe again, and provides detail into what people, sometimes seen as larger than life, were really like, making them less hero and more human. It's that way with Milton Hershey. The founder of our school died in 1945, almost 65 years before the youngest of our current students was born. Because of that, the Department of School History and Alumni Relations started the Alumni Memories Project and began to gather interviews with former students. Students who talked with Mr. Hershey, shook hands with him, and even said goodbye to him. Capturing the memories and stories of alumni makes Milton Hershey more than just a picture that hangs on a wall or a statue that sits on a shelf. These are just a few of those stories. Having breakfast with Milton Hershey was pretty special, but John Beard from the class of 37 can't tell you what he had to eat that morning. He can tell you something else you probably didn't know. I think there was only 25 or 30 of us and I happened to be the one that sat to him, the right hand side of him, right at the end of the table. He sat at the end of the table. Now, Mr. Hershey had a big German police dog, and he sat down on the floor looking up at him the whole time, and I kept looking down at the dog. Mr. Hershey assured him his dog was friendly. John Rosanovich from the class of 51 was another student who had breakfast with Mr. Hershey and in fact met him on many occasions. But the time that stands out most to him has more to do with peaches than pancakes, more basketball than bacon. One evening we were playing basketball behind the barn and the basket was an old peach basket with the bottom out. And we were playing on stones. And up pulls this big black car. It was Milton Hershey. And he stood there with his, his chauffeur and then uh, we were playing basketball with that peach basket on the corn barn on stones. Two days later, the Hershey Estates came out, tore the corn barn down, put up a basket with a basket with a pole, and paved the whole thing. Milton Hershey would listen when the students had concerns. He would also listen to band music. And Tony Perry, from the class of 42, says that the school band would often gather at the homestead and play for him, sometimes for an hour at a time and Milton Hershey would just listen and smile. Pop Price from the class of 42 recalls meeting Mr. Hershey while the students were working in a bakery. He recognized him by the straw hat that he often wore and the baking flour that would find its way onto Milton's suit. And I can still picture him, I mean that. Mr. Hershey would go back in the corner, he'd take his coat off and hang it on the clothes tree. And, but then the funny part was, when he's leaving, now we did it respectfully. We'd say, now the snowman's leaving. So he's in the candy side, playing with the, with the around in the cornstarch. He's over the baby, it has a flower, usually he has a dark suit on. So we, in respect, we call him the snowman. Hiram Shearer from the class of 38 says he remembers how Mr. Hershey would always experiment with candy and mix different things with his chocolate. He noticed one day he had a box of Rice Krispies with him. A short time later, the Crackle Candy Bar was born. Meeting the man who started the school will long be remembered by these students. But perhaps the most touching of memories would be shared by Tom Jones, class of 53. I called Dad. I knew him to my father. It was after Milton Hershey had died, and his viewing was held at what is now Catherine Hall. Tom's house father asked him not to touch Mr. Hershey, but Tom did. When he was asked why he did, Tom said he wanted to touch the man who had touched his life.